Greetings, Celestial Navigation Enthusiasts. Protothad here. I know I've promised you a video explaining sight reduction, and that is coming along, but while I go all OCD on that presentation, taking far too much time to produce it, I decided to answer a request from my channel subscribers. One of the most popular questions I get is, what sort of sextant should I buy to start learning celestial navigation? And my usual answer is the Davis Mark 15. It has a lot going for it, including a really great price point. If you've shopped online for new professional grade sextants, you might have suffered some sticker shock at the $1,000 plus prices. Even a decent used sextant can cost hundreds. The Davis Mark 15, however, is available for less than 200. Now you can find sextants cheaper than that. The Davis Mark III costs as little as $50, but it lacks some important features like the micrometer drum that gives you sub arc minute precision. And I feel that makes it more a toy than a real sextant. But the Mark III is evidently popular as an emergency lifeboat sextant and might work as something to start learning on. So if any of you have any experience with the Mark III, please tell us what you think of it in the comments. An Amazon or eBay search can also turn up some inexpensive sextants. But be careful. Most of these are decorative pieces suitable for hanging on a wall, but not really usable for navigation. In fact, without real solar shades, they can actually be unsafe to use. The Mark 15, however, is a fully featured sextant. Looking at it side by side with my old Cassins and Plath sextant that I've been using for the past three decades, it compares fairly well. Let's go through the features one by one. First off, they both come with a case, and it's definitely a good idea to keep your sextant in its case when not in use. Both have an index arm with quick release levers for doing your initial adjustments to the closest degree, but also a micrometer drum for dialing in arc minutes. In fact, the Davis is graduated to the same one-fifth of an arc minute precision as the Cassins and Plath. They both have an adjustable telescope the Plath having slightly better 4 times magnification compared to the Davis's 3 times magnification. Both have the obligatory horizon and index mirrors, with a full set of solar shades for both mirrors. And I particularly like this. While both allow calibration of the mirror alignment with similarly located adjustment screws, the Davis sextant is actually easier to calibrate, as the screws can be hand adjusted while my Plath sextant has recessed screws that need a specially keyed screwdriver. Now I have noticed that the Davis 15 seems to go out of calibration a bit more quickly than my Plath, and that could be in part because these adjustment screws are more easily bumped. But I suspect the plastic construction of the Davis reacting to temperature changes probably plays a bigger role. I'm personally not too bothered by this shortcoming since I've always been pretty diligent about checking calibration every time I take my sextant out of its case. Now, I should note that the more rugged construction of the typical metal sextant does mean they are significantly heavier than a plastic one, to the point that your wrist can actually begin to get a bit tired after taking a bunch of sights. So I would actually list the lighter weight of the plastic Davis as a point in its favor. When my wife and I vacationed in Europe last year, I was able to pack the Davis in my backpack and barely noticed it was there. That was not something I could have done with the Plath especially with its much larger and heavier case. I also wasn't nearly as keen to risk entrusting my more expensive sextant to airline baggage handling, so I probably would have skipped taking a sextant altogether if I hadn't had the Davis, missing the opportunity to add the North and Baltic Seas to the places where I've done celestial navigation. As far as ease of use goes, the motion of the index arm on the Davis is just a little bit stiff, making initial angle adjustment a little bit more difficult. But the action of the micrometer drum is actually very smooth, so overall it is still very easy to use. In regards to the overall accuracy of the Davis Mark 15 versus the Cassins and Plath, I can't definitively compare, since I have yet to test both of them under identical conditions. Though my gut feeling is that the Plath provides more consistently good results. That could be because it holds its calibration more reliably over extended use. And the slightly better optics on the Plath probably doesn't hurt. Or maybe I'm just not used to the Davis yet. Regardless, you can definitely get some decent sextant sights with the Davis. When checked against GPS, my fixes have routinely been within 10 nautical miles, and often under 4, which I personally consider a pretty good fix. So it's pretty clear why the Davis Mark 15 is a popular sextant among casual sailors. It just honestly gives you a lot of bang for the buck. 
That said, its plastic construction means it can never be as sturdy as a traditional metal sextant. If I had to choose one sextant to take on a transatlantic crossing with no GPS, it would be my Cassinson Plath, just because the thing is darn near indestructible. Now, one more thing I should talk about is the manual that comes with the Davis Mark 15. Like other sextant manuals, it covers the important fundamentals, like how to calibrate your sextant and the basics of taking a sight with it. But Davis Instruments threw in some useful extras in their manual. It's not a full nautical almanac, but it does give advice on locating Polaris, provides a condensed dip correction table, and instructions for how to do a meridian passage sun sight, even throwing in the equation of time tables needed to determine your longitude. I mean, it's not enough to do a three-star fix with sight reduction plot, but as long as you've got a decent watch, your Davis sextant comes with everything else you need to do basic daytime navigation. So no surprise that this thing is a popular pick to throw in the emergency ditch kit on a lifeboat. So there you go. That's my review of the Davis Mark 15. It has a lot going for it, including its low cost, lightweight construction, and the fact it operates just like more expensive sextants, making it perfect for learning on. The hand-adjustable calibration screws are a nice touch, and the manual includes some useful extras. On the negative side, it seems to go out of calibration more easily, and the plastic construction means it's less rugged than the more expensive alternatives, so you probably don't want to rely on it as your only option on a long voyage. Thanks for watching. My next video will probably be a short one explaining where the 60 nautical mile per degree rule comes from, followed, hopefully rather quickly, by my sight reduction video. So be sure to keep an eye out for those, and in the meantime, may the winds favor you.